an ACDC clamp meter for under 50 bucks? Stick around, let's talk about it. Hey guys, Tim here with the Gray Man Poda YouTube channel. And our friends over at Testman asked me if I'd be willing to review one of their newer smart digital meters. Of course, I said absolutely. I've had great luck with Testman meters in the past, and this one is not going to be any different. So today we will be reviewing the smart digital clamp meter. It's the TCM 300D. Now, they also have an A model, a 300A, but this one's going to be the 300D. And the big difference between those is that the D is a DC and AC model. The A is an, uh, an AC only model. It's a little bit cheaper, but it does not do DC. So if you are a uh, DIY or around the house, if you're doing solar power, any kind of mechanical automotive, you're going to need DC. In my case, I do amateur radio and we do a lot with batteries. So DC is the way to go. It's a few bucks more, but I'll tell you what, it's uh, definitely worth the money and it is not going to break the bank. So without further ado, let's get over to the bench and uh, check this meter out. Okay, so we are here with the Tessman Digital Smart Clamp Meter, uh, the TCM 300D. I do want to point out this, this one is the D model and the D model uh, will do both AC and DC. So this is a true RMS uh, meter. And once you get in the box, you'll see a nice presentation here, a carrying case, which you may or may not keep in your, uh, your toolbox. Uh, but inside that, we have a couple things. And first of all, we're presented with the manual. Uh, I actually had an opportunity to kind of zip through the manual pretty quick. So it is in multiple languages, and I can at least uh, confirm that the English is pretty well written. I can't uh, speak for the other languages in there. Uh, but there's a nice uh, set of uh, information in there. They do uh, claim a three-year warranty. Uh, and some, some of the, the kind of the key uh, components uh, that this meter is good for is both AC and DC current, AC and DC voltage, resistance, continuity, diodes, frequency, capacitance, and here, temperature. You can actually uh, take the uh, temperature reading of your uh, coffee. Now, I'm not sure if you would do that, but you can do that. Uh, this meter also has a non-contact voltage circuit in there. So if you're doing any kind of work, uh, replacing receptacles, things like that, uh, instead of having to have a separate uh, you know, non-contact voltage uh, probe, you can actually use the uh, tip of this meter, which is, which is really nice. Uh, so it's got the live wire detection, it's got uh, a data hold, and that is important in, uh, in a situation uh, which is the next feature of this, and that's inrush, uh, in being able to uh, test the inrush current. Now that's not something that you find on the cheaper meters in general, um, and where does that really come into play? For the most people, if you're doing uh, hobbyist type or home repair DIY kind of things, inrush may not be that big of a deal. Uh, but if you are doing something where you've got large machinery and you're starting it up, you're, you're going to take a big surge as capacitors and stuff like that get uh, charged up or a motor gets to spinning. There's a, there's a lot of current draw until you know, things kind of stabilize out and go back down to its, its uh, normal uh, you know, operating current draw. So in rush. So here's what we got. We got the meter. Uh, sealed packaging. And as you can see, it, it fits well in my hand. Um, meter, the clamp's got a good spring on it, so it, it returns pretty well. Um, there's not much in the way of a grip. It is a little slick, but to be honest, I'm, I'm not overly concerned about that. If you were using this in a professional uh, setting, you know, might look at that a little bit differently, but for the hobbyist DIY person, I don't necessarily think that that's a big deal. Now we have a couple packages of probes here. So we've got our standard um, standard multimeter probes. Uh, positive and negative. We've got tips on there. We do have safety caps to minimize the amount of exposed uh, probe. 
That way, if you're not, if you have to stick it into side of, you know, inside of energized equipment, uh, you minimize the amount of exposure to a conductive surface in there. So that's nice. Now, one of the nice things about this meter, it is a class three uh, meter. So it's rated up to 600 volts. And for class three, that's generally three phase power, uh, what would be coming into your house uh, and, and below. So up to uh, industrial uh, lighting and also receptacles too in, in, your, uh, in your building. So that's where the class three uh, rating comes in. Uh, it is also uh, <clears throat> rated for the European ROHS standards uh, too. So it does include three, and this I don't think you see very often in a lot of equipment, especially something that's not as expensive, uh, is uh, name brand batteries. So kudos to them. And then we also have the temperature probe here. Um, I was only joking about the coffee, but you know, maybe you can do that. But that would be something if you wanted to, maybe, you know, if you needed to test the temperature in a cabinet, maybe test to see if your refrigerator is getting to the level that it says, or your oven. I believe it's good up to a thousand, thousand degrees Celsius. Okay. The only other thing I got to knock it on right so far, slick case not a captive screw. I uh, would have liked to seen a captive screw in there. That would have minimized that risk of losing that screw, especially if you're changing batteries out in the field. That's one thing here on the bench. So as you can see, pretty, pretty nice to read screen. I can, uh, I can see this and it may not show up on the camera very well. Uh, I'm tipping it at different angles and I, I'm able to read it here. <clears throat> now this multimeter uh, is, it has an automatic mode. So like, as you can see right now, it is kind of balancing or bouncing between uh, current voltage resistance and, and continuity. Now on the continuity and the auto mode, if the, uh, I believe if it's less than hundred ohms, uh, it will ring. Okay, to start off here, we've got a uh, we've got some one k ohm resistors. Now they're plus or minus five percent. And if we go ahead and read across one here, our meter is telling us it's nine hundred eighty seven ohms, which plus or minus five percent would be nine hundred fifty would be our out of spec. So we're we're within spec on resistance. So these are some 10,000 or 10K resistors. And if we measure across them, we'll see it's 9.8K. So once again, still within that margin of tolerance. I think in I think in general, you know, most DIYers, may, unless you're doing electronics projects, may not get into component level testing like that. But more so, um, you know, in your uh, in your home. But also, and you know, another thing that that kind of stands out with this meter, which is nice, and especially doing DC. Now, my big thing is uh, amateur radio, and we do a lot with DC. If you're doing stuff at home with solar, this is another good. Uh, meter to have in your toolkit because it does the DC and power coming in from your panels. You're going to want to obviously make sure you're not drawing current uh, or current flowing from the panel when you're trying to do any kind of work. And, and then also probably the third real uh, big one that, that you would want to, uh, to, to have a meter like this for is if you're doing uh, stuff in your car, automotive work. I mean, half of the uh, vehicle is electric now. And uh, because it is uh, a car, it, it operates on, on DC. So, you know, whether you're doing an EV where you've got the higher voltages or you're doing a traditional ICE engine and you're running 13.8, 13, you know, 14 volts, uh, a meter like this is, uh, is good for what you're doing there. So let's look at a, a couple other things real quick. Um, 
non-contact voltage live. So I've got a 12 volt power supply here. I've actually got a radio that is powered on. And just as I moved it in, the radio into the field, it's detecting that there's actual voltage here. Okay, so uh, got the uh, got the wire set up here on the meter. We're going to test current with my radio. Um, currently, I'm set to low power, and uh, we've got a, an approximate draw on the uh, of current right now on the radio or from the power supply at about 1.85 amps, while the radio is just sitting idle. Um, so let's go ahead and transmit on low power. November Whiskey 9 Foxtrot, testing one, two, three, three, two, one. All right, so transmitting on low power, uh, I, I pulled about 4.6 amps of current or, or from the, the power supply. So 4.6 amps from the power supply. So let's go ahead and move this up to mid. November Whiskey 9 Foxtrot testing one, two, three, three, two, one. All right, so over six amps of current draw uh, in the mid power, and we'll go ahead and move it up to high. This is going to be the most transmitting power, most amount of power transmitted out of the radio. November Whiskey 9 Foxtrot testing one, two, three, three, two, one. All right, so over 11, uh, 11 amps of current draw from the radio in this scenario. So all in all, for, for somebody like myself, and you know, I find this uh, to be a, a good meter, and, I, and I'm going to say this, there's a lot of uh, equipment out there that's, that's available. I've, I've dealt with Tessman before. I have another Tessman meter that, that I use on a regular basis here on the bench, and, and I like it. They've, uh, they make good quality stuff. I actually had a friend of mine who is a commercial electrician look at this thing and he's, uh, he's buying one uh, just for, for what it offers for you know, uh, the, the prosumer. And we'll, we'll just refer to it as that. Uh, but you know, the, the feature sets that uh, come with it for you know, the, the DYI or uh, somebody doing the electrical work around the house, somebody needing a meter that can, can handle uh, DC for somebody that's doing automotive or uh, solar power, that is great too. And then obviously here in the amateur radio community, we do a lot with DC with batteries and stuff. So uh, having a meter like this and having it in a ballpark that's not going to break the bank, is it a fluke meter? Absolutely not. But it doesn't have a fluke price tag either. So I will put a uh, link to this down below uh, for Amazon. It's an affiliate link. Uh, they occasionally have uh, sales on there. I think there's a spring promotion at the time of this video. So hopefully you liked this review. If you have any questions or comments, put those down in the comments section. Like this video, share this content with your friends, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. And until we have an opportunity to meet on the air, I have a video right over here that you might be interested in.